Hello and welcome to the Matt Lagore Show. I'm your host, Matt Lagore. Uh, on the Matt Lagore Show, I like to focus mostly on being an entrepreneur or entrepreneurship. And recently, someone uh, told me or uh, told me a story about how uh, entrepreneurs are the alchemist of the economy. And if you don't know what an alchemist is, an alchemist basically can turn lead into gold. So, you know, lead is a commodity and it's, it's, it has a value, but they can turn something of value into something priceless. So, you know, and in life, that's basically what an entrepreneur does. They take an idea and they turn it into something better for themselves and the people around them. And today we're going to talk about credit cards, and credit cards in of themselves are created by an entrepreneur, someone who took the idea of credit and turned it into something really quite amazing when you, when you think about it. A card that you can do every transaction on, it's totally safe, it's protected, it builds your credit, and as long as you fulfill your end of the obligation, uh, you can basically use that card for free for the most part. Now, uh, keeping all that in mind about entrepreneurs and alchemists and everything, uh, we're going to talk about how taking a credit card from a basic tool, so to speak, which is, you know, I go to the store and buy something with it, uh, to creating it into something somewhat priceless or its, its service into something priceless. Now, when I think of a credit card, I think of like, uh, well, what's the best interest rate? Um, I want to make sure I pay my monthly balance so I don't pay too much interest. And what's the annual fee? And that's basically where most people's um, uh, knowledge of credit cards ends. I know that's kind of where mine ends. I know a little bit more. But today on the show, I have someone who has taken the concept of a credit card and turned it into something really, truly uh, priceless. Uh, and Tony, welcome to the show. Tony Restuccia. Uh, Tony, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, how old you are, and everything. Well, uh, Matt, first, thanks for having me. You're I welcome. love to share this knowledge with people. But I'm 28. I'm a tech worker. Uh, but I moonlight as a uh, credit card mild hacker. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I'll essentially just surf the internet looking for good deals on credit cards and kind of weigh their benefits with their points and flows and then take those points and then kind of use them for airfare, hotels, um, cash back if I'm desperate for, for cash. But generally, I use it to travel the world for free. And uh, recently, I just took a trip to Europe. It consisted of uh, 18, it was 18 days. Mm -hmm. It was four, four countries, seven cities. Um, it was like $18,000 in value, and it cost me about $2,000. I didn't pay for a flight. I didn't pay for a hotel. And I was staying at Hyatt's, you know, uh, uh, Marriott's, uh, Intercontinentals, all of it for, for nothing, essentially. So you're staying at five-star hotels? Yes. Right? You're flying. You didn't just fly uh, coach, right? I flew five-star airlines in business class. Um, I was in the upper deck of a 747, a lifelong dream of mine. Yeah. I was in you know, all these nice business lounges where you can just eat and drink to your heart's pleasure. Um, anything that I did in style is mm -hmm. the best way to describe mm -hmm. it. Even on the trains, I, uh, I flew and fly, I trained in first class. Yeah. So no, no expense was spared and it didn't even cost me much to you know, live that lifestyle. Really? Okay, so now you call yourself a uh, Miles Hacker. Now, I, I, kind of when we hear the term hacker, we're thinking like, oh man, this guy's fucking, excuse me, uh, is breaking the system, all right? You, on the other hand, are a hacker and you're using it for... Pleasure. Pleasure. And, and, and you it, figured a way out to use these miles, but not in an illegal way, in a well, completely legal way, because of the competition between credit cards, right? Right. You're essentially just profiting off credit card competition. It's perfectly legal. The rebit... The credit card miles come in the form of rebates, so they're not even taxable. So I don't have to worry about that either. And you can just go along, and if you plan your trip correctly and just you know think far enough ahead, you can basically acquire the miles you need to do anything for free, or mostly free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like recently, there was a promotion for in I, uh, Iberia. They said if you sign up for if you buy ten flights, we'll give you nine thousand miles per flight. Sign and see. You don't, you, don't even, you don't even have to go to the flight. Mm -hmm. You just get the miles. So I took those miles and I transferred them to another airline and then I booked a flight to, you know, the Far East, you know, Hong Kong or something. Yeah. So stuff like that is perfectly reasonable. But I, went, I wanted to actually circle back to your alchemist kind sure. of thing. Because 
what I'm what I'm doing is essentially turning something that is value has no value until you actually you know find it and use it into tens of thousands of dollars of you know, r- you know free rides or mm-hmm. free accommodations or just free money at, at the, the lowest level. Yeah. So you're taking a credit card, like a credit card. You're taking the concept of a credit card, which everybody has at least one. Sometimes you have people have five, right? Right. And you're turning what, you know, we watch the commercial, what's in your wallet, right? And what do they offer you? One percent, one and a half, two percent. Two percent. Cash back. That's the Capital One Venture card. Right. And that's the two that's percent. The two percent, which is nice. It's better than nothing, right? Yeah. But it doesn't really, it's not going to amount to much. Not well, for the you, average person. That initial bonus does amount. You know, the right. $500. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I always ask people, what's, what, would you rather pay 100% for something or 98% for something? And yeah. over a course of, you know, we all spend, you know, an average adult's going to spend $10,000 a year on um, just expenses. And it's going to add up over time. You know, $10,000 is right there, 200 bucks back in your pocket. That's mm-hmm. enough for uh, a free date night. You know? Yep, yep. So, I mean, it is something, right? Right. But you've taken it to a whole other level. Yeah, I've gone on steroids with it, and <laughs> and I'm you know, if you do it right, you can and you use your cards. You're not you know, making everybody angry because Visa, I mean uh, Chase or Amex will start denying you if you you know, are considered a churner. Yeah, I mean, like a whole there's a whole Reddit dedicated to churning how to you know VPN across the coast to get certain card accounts. It's, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, but uh, yes, yeah, I have probably 15, 16 credit cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, most a lot of my annual fees, but you can either negotiate that down. You know, there's no harm in ask, calling the credit card company and saying, "I don't, I don't want to pay this annual fee. I'll cancel this if I, if I don't want to pay. It, mm-hmm. You know, if you don't waive it." Yeah. Or you can just um, you can trade it down. A lot of cards have you know upper tier, middle tier, lower tier. So if you don't want to pay that 450, you just negotiate it down to the zero, mm-hmm. and they perfectly found perfectly found that you're still a customer. Yeah. The credit line stays open, so that helps your age age of history. But uh, all my cards have very large intro bonuses as well so i'm getting maximum value on because a lot of them have language you can only get it once in a lifetime or once every 24 months so you got to make it count as well with yeah. the signups so i've kind of maximized that as well so mm-hmm. is you're maximizing how to get them and you're maximizing using them as well all right so let's do, let's cut to the chase here where t- let's talk about your trip yep. all right eighteen thousand dollar trip right is that what you said eighteen thousand how many days 18 days. 18 days, all right. And you paid? About 2000 2000 Mostly in uh, food and trains. Right. What were, were t- tell me a couple of things you that you saw that were like uh, bucket list, once in a lifetime things, right? Right. So just in general, Berlin for me was a city I've been dying to get to. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, wandering around that city, it was Seeing the Brandenburg Gate, I don't know why it was so important to me, but it was, it was really cool to see it. Yeah, yeah. The cultures there are really neat. Um, you know, oh, you know, we go to Munich. You know, you go to the the, the famous Hofbrauhaus. I don't know if that's how I say it, but the, the famous bear house that's just gigantic, and you get a pretzel there, and you get to kind of do all that, see everything there. Did your pretzel cost you any money, or were you able to work that into your credit card. I paid it on my credit card. You paid it on your credit got three, card. I got, I got three times back on that on my safe <laughs> on my reserve. But the pretzel was, uh, I got a pretzel, a couple liters of beer. It was only you know, like 30, 25 euro. Perfectly fine with me. And then um, just Vienna itself was um, the most amazing city I've ever been to. It was beautiful. It's got, it didn't get bombed out during World War II, so everything's mm-hmm. still, all the old stuff is still there. Mm-hmm. The Natural History Museum, you remember the Habsburgs ran the world for 200 years. So yeah. they have all, everything there. It, it, it's one of the most amazing museums I've ever been to in my life. And then you see, I was right next, I stayed across the street from the Opera House, you know, the most famous opera house in the world. They have a little walk of fame there with, you know, Wagner and, uh, um, Strauss and you know those folks. Mm-hmm. So Vienna, you know, Stevens. Vienna was probably the prettiest city. Stockholm. I also went to Stockholm. That was the coolest city. It was just kind of chill, and uh, it was like very walkable, super clean. Didn't see any homeless. That mm-hmm. was like the most amazing thing for me. But all in all, Salz, I went to Salzburg as well. This vacation went on and on and on. And I mean, to be honest, Europe does things right. It's a little bit more expensive, but beautiful place. You know, it wasn't. I never felt threatened. Like yeah. I, I, if you're New York, you might feel a little threatened. You know, no sure, offense to yeah. New Yorkers, but I mean, take offense. I don't care. Um, <laughs> you can feel threatened there, but in Europe, I never felt even remotely in, 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 for fear in my life. And you know, Munich and 
Berlin, they're gritty. You know, there, there's some grit there because you know, mm-hmm. they're still cheap cities. Well, Berlin's cheap. So like a lot of artists live there. So it's a little, it's a little grittier. It's kind of nice. So when you say grittier, it's just like a work, more working class type person uh, or it, more it, like it just, a... I don't know how to describe The vibe was like younger. Yeah. You can drink on the streets there. Mm-hmm. Um, a, lot, a lot of tattoos on people. Like there's like an underground culture there that I yeah. couldn't even get into because I'm there for four days. You know, I, I can't you know, get into underground culture in four days. I'm not that cool. <laughs> and, uh, but you just, you can, it just felt different. I don't really, how, you have to kind of be on the ground to yeah. understand it. No, I, I kind of do know what you're talking about. Like, um, you know, being a little bit of an older guy and everything, like going into, um, the South End now, uh, <laughs> and everything, that's a, that's a different vibe than what I'm used to, you know? Right. And it's so vibrant and there's so much stuff going on, you know? Um, it, it's really cool. It's really cool. Uh, so I think I kind of, Right. I kind of understand what you're saying. I almost see it in the seaport, you know. When I was, even when I was a kid, the seaport was, in Boston was nothing. Nothing. And now it's, you know, the posh center of the... the it's city. the place to go, right? Yeah. I mean, it's really the place to go. When I was a kid, the only thing we were down there were like two restaurants. You had the No Name restaurant and uh, Jimmy's, and Anthony's Pier 4, of course, was down there. But that was it. The rest of it was just loading docks. Right. You know, and now it's the the hub of the city. And credit cards weren't even that big of a deal back then. No, they weren't that big of a deal. <laughs> you know what's funny? I was thinking about like credit cards. I I got my first credit card when I was nineteen, and I think the annual fee was like uh, forty five dollars a year. And I and I and I got a I got a fifteen hundred dollar credit limit. I couldn't believe it. You know, couldn't believe I get a fifteen hundred dollar credit card. Um, and even then, a lot of them were still the ch- chunk right, thing. You yeah. know. Now it's slide in the chip and everything, you know. In Europe, a lot of it is uh, tap now. Just tap it right on yeah. that thing there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. So um, your trip, you documented the whole thing? Oh, yeah. So I documented uh, everything on my Instagram. My mm-hmm. Instagram is at T-O-N Travels. Um, Tone it, Travels. Tone Travels, yes. Yeah. And then I also have a unique hashtag around it. Because uh, it was a vacation financed on points, I, uh, I have a unique hashtag, pointscation. pointscation hashtag yeah. pointscation. And yeah. I have uh, all my good pictures up there, I have some food pictures, mm-hmm. but I have all my Instagram stories saved, all my Instagram. If, you ever wanna, if you're ever in, the, in those cities and you need ideas or yeah. things to see, it's, uh, you can build an itinerary right out of my stuff. It's all pretty much uh, all the hot stuff you want to see in these cities. Yeah. Yeah. So you've done a lot of traveling, though. For a guy your age, you've done some really yeah, I've incredible got about, traveling. You I know, I have about almost twenty countries now. Have, hoping to add a few more this next year. But mm-hmm. so let's just go. First of all, you, I know you've been to Tokyo, right? Yes, I went to Tokyo for uh, New Year's. In uh, New Year's last year, right? Yes, right? Yeah, almost a year ago now. Wow, pretty incredible city. Yes, and the, the best trains in the world. They run on time. People mm-hmm. sync their watches to the Tokyo subway because they run so perfectly on time. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cleanest city I've ever been to, but yeah. there's no trash barrels um, anywhere. Everybody just carries the trash and throws it out at home. So the culture is you take care of your own stuff, yeah. right? And take- you don't throw it on the street. It's just uh, the culture says that's not yeah. appropriate. And the best food there. They've Another good place. Ultra expensive, though. Yeah. But beautiful, beautiful. I went in the winter. I kind of I like to go in the summer once. It'd be nice. I'm uh, I'm planning to head back to Asia soon, so hopefully mm-hmm. I can get there. Now you went to Taiwan too. Yes, Taiwan or if China's listening, Taipei. <laughs> <laughs> they are listening. Yeah. They, are. they love the Matt Lagore show in China. I don't of know course, if you knew that. Yes. But go ahead. Yes, uh, my you know my my girlfriend's Taiwanese, and I never actually thought Taiwan is a great as a tourist hub, but it's actually really neat. Again, good metro. All these Asian cities have awesome metros. It's so mm-hmm. nice. The trains run on time. And a lot of good culture. You can get the best food there. Like, you, you just walk down the street, and then you just, you just you, you know, something hits your nose. And you're like, okay, I got to get that. You walk over, it's like a buck for like a plate, a giant plate of food. Fre- now, what makes it so good? The freshness, the freshness and quality, the seasoning. What would you say makes it so good? Asian flavors are better. Yeah. There's no way to really say it. The food is vibrant. It's spicy. It's got such amazing uh, just flavor and taste. It, yeah. just, it tingles you. Right. Sometimes it'll, you'll taste something, it'll burn your lips. You say, wow, that's really good. I can't feel my lips anymore, though. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, I guess uh, it's not like uh, you, go, you go somewhere in Asia and they got a salt and pepper shaker and a ketchup bottle, right? They, they've kind of already put it in the food. You don't need that. Yeah, I actually never saw ketchup in Tokyo. Now <laughs> I think about it. 
<laughs> wow, they don't know what they're missing. No, I, think I did. We I did have a. The funny part is when I went to Asia last time, I ate all this, you know, amazing food from, you know, foods I've never had before or off the street, not off the street, but like night market, you know, vendors, and didn't get sick. I went to Tokyo, went to a Marriott, had a Western breakfast, got sick. Mm -hmm. I couldn't mm -hmm. believe it. The eggs got me, like, the eggs and bacon didn't sit well in my system after, you know, 17 days of eating, you know, the most delicious dumplings and, uh, you know, you know, pig blood sticks, this weird stuff. Yeah. Never even knew there was such a thing as pig blood sticks, uh, but get, now like, I want like, one. big, it's huge. <laughs> so. so, you're a kid that came from, you know, a modest background, you know, hard work and family. Uh, you went to um, high school and college, right? Yep. And what gave you this this like desire first of all what gave you the desire to travel so much like where did that come oh, from? oh so in 2000 uh 2010 we had a terrible winter here mm -hmm. and i remember shoveling and i was like i remember saying that's it i'm not doing this n another year <laughs> so i looked into my school programs for study abroad found the farthest place away in winter which was sydney and i just said mom dad let's make this happen and you know, I did all the legwork, and I booked a flight. You know, booked a semester in Sydney, where it's 95 degrees in in February, which is nice. So you you said I'm going back this summer. Yeah. And you flew to the other side of the world. I call it my year of summer, 2011. That's pretty awesome, huh? Though I did have a little winter. Yeah. I had a couple months of winter, but I, I slept on the last the last three months I didn't have to deal with. So you're 20 years old at the time, and you say to yourself, I've had enough winter, all right? Which I say every winter, by the way, and I'm 52, so you're obviously <laughs> smarter than me, all right? And so you go and you say, I'm going to Sydney, all right? That in itself, I mean... Alone. Al by yourself, right. all right? Now, when you did that, did you pay for that with hard-earned cash, or had you already... Hard-earned kind of student, hard-earned hard government loans. Hard-earned government loans. So, so you really did that trip in a way that was... Not the most practical way. Oh, no, it was the worst way to possibly do it, <laughs> in hindsight. So, you, you, time goes by, all right? You've got the travel bug now. You love to travel, right? After that trip, were you like, I, I want to travel more? I want to travel, but cash flow was an issue. Okay, so money. You know, obviously, right. you want to do something. Everything costs money. Right. And so, how did you, were you introduced to the idea of, as you say, credit card hacking, miles hacking? Right. Two credit cards opened my world up. It was the... Capital One Ventures card. Mm -hmm. It financed my first trip to Las Vegas. Yeah. And then the Amex Gold card mm -hmm. financed my second trip to Vegas. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, wow, I can get this stuff for free. So that kind of... When you say financed, you were... Paid for my flights. Okay. And then I went with my friends, so we booked a hotel. The hotel was very cheap. You know, we stayed at a good hotel, like the Bellagio, but you split it three ways. It's only like 60 bucks a person. Yeah, right. So uh, when I realized I could get the flights free, at the most basic level of cash bag. I was like, okay, I'm onto something here. And then as time evolved, I stumbled across this Chase Sapphire Reserve in a 100,000 mile intro bonus, which is worth at a minimum $1,500 in travel. Mm -hmm. I, I turned it into closer to like $2,000. And this is still when I just learned the credit card game here. But I went to London and uh, I booked hotels, I booked experiences like the London Eye, I went to Harry Potter Studios, Westminster Abbey, and the Tower of London. I used all my credit card miles. And then I, and then I sold some left over, so then I booked a trip to Montreal on those credit card miles at the Sofitel, another five-star hotel. So that was like my first, when I, that was like me starting to really learn about it. And then mm -hmm. after that, I threw myself into it. I found all these websites like The Points Guy and Million Mile Secrets, which is where I got a feature for my trip to Europe, mm -hmm. and, and then uh, the board is another website, boarding area, it's like an aggregate of all these websites, and I really started to learn about how I can take money and then kind of just wave my credit card around, and, well, take my credit card, wave it around, and turn, uh, you know, $4,000 in spending into $5,000 in rewards, mm -hmm. which is, you know, what I'm doing um, all the time now. Yeah, so that, you know, that that's a really brilliant concept there that you've grasped and I, I don't think a lot of people grasp it is the fact that you can take you know your money and turn it into something else of value I think we all look at money and say well that's value right everything is related to a dollar right? right it's not really true you know there's value in other things and you took these miles and you turned that which is basically money and turned it into something you were going to use right 
I mean, you have to, obviously you have to want to travel to kind of yeah. exploit this, and it helps if you have a lot of expenses. You know, I'm in grad school, so you can just pay for grad school and credit cards and just collect juicy bonuses. Mm -hmm. It's easy. You know, if you're if you're not spending more than a thousand, if you're spending five hundred dollars a month, you know, it's good for you first of all, being responsible. But it's probably not the best game for you in the uh, in the short term. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, wait till you you know start spending more. You know, it, I I saw an interesting interview with Frank Abagnale. You know who he oh, is? Oh, yes. Yeah. Catch me if you can. Yeah, right. And he is the proponent of do everything on a credit card. Everything on a credit card. I don't care what you do. No debit card. Not a MasterCard debit card. A credit card. Because every time you use it, improve your credit score. Right. All right? It's 100% safe. You know, you never have to worry. If someone steals it and does use it, not your fault. Not your yeah, problem. A lot of them have insurances on cell phones, yeah. car rentals, uh, I, uh, I recently had a charge against me uh, through a payment company that I didn't get the service. So I just called, I, instead of me dealing with the payment company, I just went to a chase and said, hey, these guys jipped me. I got the money back in three days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's yeah great. the insurance on those are, are, alone are great. You know? Yeah, I, you know, car rentals. I, I, I work in the automotive industry, so I have people bringing me car, rental cars all the time that they dented, and they don't want to bring it back. So... Usually, it's always worse than something I can fix for the, for the business I'm in. And I'll look at them, I'll go, well, I want to ask you a question. Did you, they go, I didn't get the insurance. I go, okay, what credit card do you use? Oh, I used uh, Amex. Amex. I said, that's great. Call Amex up. I think they have insurance on the card for this. Right. You can't, the worst part is, the worst possible scenario is they say, no, we don't. Right? Yeah, exactly. And the best part is they could. So. And believe it or not, out of half the people, I know that they've called their credit card up and they've been taken care of. I don't know what happened to the other half people because they never told me. You know, <laughs> I'm sure they just went somewhere else. But so you know, I got to say that this is uh, one of the uh, most interesting little little <clears throat> side businesses you got going on here, or, or that that's, that you've uh, kind of kind of tapped into. What if somebody wants to uh, you know to ask you some questions? Is there any way they can ask you a question? Yeah, you can always DM me at my Instagram. I, I pretty much am on that five times, ten times a day. I'm obsessed with Instagram. It's fun to look at. Mm -hmm. it, and again, it's at Tone Travels, T-O-N-T-R-A-V-E-L-S. All right, cool. We'll put it on the screen yep. so people can see it. And, of course, they can always hit hashtag. Pointscation. Yeah. So what's up next? What's your next uh, uh, Miles vacation? What's coming up? I keep alluding to my Asia trip. Yes, coming I, up. I, I picked up on that. I'm very excited. I'm, uh, I'm flying... To Hong Kong out of Newark uh -huh. on a, a nice business class flight, the Cathay Pacific. Mm -hmm. Cost me 400 bucks for all the miles. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm going to Singapore to stay at the infamous Mariana Sands Bay, mm -hmm. Mariana Bay Sands. It's the one with the three pillars and the spaceship on top yeah. with uh, the oh. infinity pool. It's one of the coolest hotels. It's, it's on my bucket list. And then I'd like to probably go, probably go back to Taiwan in Tokyo and uh, probably head back home, maybe Shanghai. It, Depends how much how the timing works out and how many miles I have. Something basic, just a basic trip. Yeah, just is what a basic we're yeah. Asia okay. swing. Asia swing, going through the uh, Orient, yep. so to speak. There, you know, you know. I used to have a, a friend who would go to Hong Kong. He he, uh, older guy. He fought in Vietnam. Go to Hong Kong. I guess was like a good place to go for like your your uh, downtime. Huh. Always come back with a nice silk suit. Yes, uh, Vietnam and, and uh, Thailand, Bangkok. I know them for the silk suits. Yeah, Vietnam is a place I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely obsessed with. Da Nang has the Da Nang and Ho Chi Minh City, and even Hanoi. I'm not crazy about Hanoi. Look like amazing places to go visit. Mm -hmm. I understand that Vietnam is like a huge uh, travel destination now. It's beautiful. And it's, they like Americans again, so it's all good. <laughs> Ho Chi Minh City is a beautiful, cheap city, too. Yeah. It, it, and it's vibrant, and it's got great nightlife. And, of course, like all Asian cities, amazing, amazing street food. Just absolutely amazing. So street vendors, uh, like stuff like that? Or is there, are they have, like, stores? They have, like, stores? market. I mean, they have stores, too. But yeah. the, most, a lot of, the best place to find food is in markets where the families own this stall for 85 years. And, they have, and, this, and all the broth has been boiling for that long, for all you know. And, <laughs> so you haven't shut it off yeah, for 85 and, and, years. And the flavor has <laughs> just been simmering forever. Yeah. yeah you go get some pho. And that, that's, it, that's the Vietnamese uh, soup that everybody P-H-O, right? P-H-O. Yeah, yeah. It's the best soup in the world. It is delicious. Yeah. You know, there's a place in Malden, yes. not too far from your house. Right but, but there's a few places, I think, in Malden that is absolutely phenomenal. And right. it costs like, you go in there and you get the, the bowl and like they give you like a spring roll and a drink. And it's like, 
a seven dollars or yeah, something. Yeah, it's incredible how, like, that's the best part of Asian food. You get a lot, it's cheap, it's flavorful, delicious, it won't, it, it, it's, and it just won't kill you. Like, it's not heavy. Yeah, it's not like eating a Big Mac and some french fries, right? right. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's a funny thing is they, they love Big Macs over in China. But all, but if you eat it, if you eat a McDonald's in China, it's not like a McDonald's in North Russia. No, so I went, I made a point in every country in Europe to go to McDonald's to mm -hmm. check it out. And they're all a little different. They're a little... Uh, first of all, they're they have, they are all a bit more modernized before yeah. the U.S. ones for some strange reason. Yeah. But like in Switzerland, I got like this quinoa burger that was like with the curry sauce, and it was amazing. It was like <laughs> I was like, oh my god, what are we doing? Why isn't this in the U.S.? You know what? I was uh, of course I haven't been to twenty countries uh, in my life, but I have been to Montreal, yeah. and uh, I was kind of shocked by the McDonald's that I went in there, and most of it was the kiosks. Yeah, the, the screens, right? Yeah, the screens, yeah. and they were like a bunch of them, and that was how you know, yeah, that that was how you did your business yep. there, and they had some people, but everybody went to the kiosk. It's much better, and and their their, their stores are was really cool. You know, it wasn't like McDonald's. I mean, I grew up in the McDonald's. It was just a a, a booth. It was red, yeah, no, blue, yeah. yellow with a clown, you know, and, but you go to these other McDonald's, especially in Europe, and they're like, uh, really elegant almost. It's, it's kind of weird, isn't it? It's why, is it, why, why isn't the founding country the one getting all these cool things? Why is, uh, why is the, the McDonald's in Stockholm the, 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 <laughs> neatest, the neatest one I've ever been to in my life? <laughs> I get, that's a topic for another show. We're going to tackle that one too. We're going to do some research on it. We're going to get to the bottom of it. It's McDonald's around the world. I like it. Yeah, that's the next, that's our next show. We'll do that one together. All right. <laughs> so how much do you think that trip uh, to Hong Kong would cost if I say I had to pay for it out of pocket? That flight is a fifty-five hundred dollar flight. My flight back is uh, probably going to be about a three thousand dollar flight. I'll probably get. I, I'm, I'm going to use different miles, Alaska miles for that. Uh -huh. But again, all normal spending. Wait, Alaska miles? Is there something special? Alaska about Airlines. Oh, okay. They have, all right. They have the best redemption values. Yep. You can get like a business class flight for fifty thousand miles, mm -hmm. whereas like AA will cost you seventy thousand. So, is uh, they're they're hard to earn, but they're better to use. All More right, so, so let's just go back to that. Let's wrap that up. Uh, $8,000, $8,500 on flights. Flights alone. Yeah. And then I have, uh, a free, I have a few free nights uh, for Hyatt's and uh, Intercontinentals and SPGs. So that's going to save me about another thousand. Saying it's a very fancy hotels. I'm, you can't stay at the Mariana Sands Bay for free, mm -hmm. for points. They don't have a point system. So mm -hmm. I've actually started saving for that. That's, that, that, that's the only real big expense I'm going to have to deal with. Yeah. But... Uh, I'll probably stay at a Hyatt's that I have miles for, so I can, I'll be able to get around that. And if the worst case, I have, you know, like a couple hundred thousand American Amex miles, I'll just use those as cash and deem right through their portal and get, uh, and, you know, go for free through there. So how much do you think you'll spend out of pocket? Now, of course, the hotel is kind of like a bucket list experience thing. Yep. It's different. It's something you want to do. Um, what do you think that trip, though, would cost? Like start, you know, ballpark. I don't know. With... Uh, Overall, because I'm gonna fly Singapore, uh, probably that's probably gonna be another twelve, thirteen thousand dollars. It's gonna cost me out of pocket no more than two again, two to three thousand. So, so you're gonna take a twelve, thirteen thousand dollar trip for about two grand. Yeah, unbelievable. You know, I, I've gone to New York City, and it's cost me two grand just to pay for the hotel, gas, food, parking, yeah, it's and everything. Right? You spend two grand, and like you said, you go to New York now, New York City. It's a little sketchy, especially around Times Square. You know, uh, a lot more homeless people around there than there used to be and everything. Um, so, yeah, so that's, uh, that's absolutely remarkable, Tony. Yeah. In those cities, they, uh, again, I mean, Hong Kong is known as a little dirty, but um, it's got the posh areas. And the next part about Asia is, again, the homeless people, they don't bother you. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are some, but they're mostly it's by choice or... They just don't, they don't bother you. It's nice. Most respectful homeless people in the world. Yes. It's, it's really <laughs> weird. The culture is interesting over there. Yeah. It's like a lot of, I tell you, a lot of people just go over there and fall in love with it because the culture is so baffling to, mm -hmm. to a Westerner. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I mean, it is, it is. If you spend a lot of time around, you know, Asian people, they're, they are so much different. I, I think the thing that's, that kind of blows me away is that the way that they are, kind of like interact with each other. They have a certain kind of dynamic, you know. They're not really friendly, 
per, per se. Like they're not hugging and everything. Well, I think it's the language. The language sound is, is a bit harsher sounding. It does sound kind of harsh, yeah. You, you can't sing Mandarin. Right? You can sing Italian and French. <laughs> yeah, you know, I guess we don't have a lot of, you know, a lot of operas in uh, Mandarin that I know of, at least. Actually, I, and when I was in Tokyo, I stayed right by the uh, the, uh, the Tokyo Opera House. Yeah. Right? Really, uh, really cool. It was really old looking. Uh, I, I wanted to go, but we just ran out of time. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't know what language they sang about, sang in, to be honest. But I assume they were playing, man, like old school, you know. Um, Japanese folklore kind of stuff. Wow. You brought me back a lot of little snacks from that trip, which I wanted to thank you for. They were delicious. Yes, those and they the were best. completely on you. On everything was different. It was like, what's this? I don't, I don't know. The flavor weird. again. It's they're better at this flavor game than we are. They mm -hmm. they make these Tokyo bananas. Everybody who's listening should go and just go fly to Tokyo, get some bana Tokyo bananas. They're like Twinkies with banana custard, but they're better. Yeah, I had like <laughs> six of them. I, I, yeah. I, they were fantastic. They're not like super sweet. But yeah. they're, but they're the right amount of sweet. Like it doesn't blast your mouth with sugar. <laughs> it, it it just kind of like envelops it a little bit. Right. And you it it it's a because I'm a I'm a sweets guy. I like dessert, you know. So you know if a dessert's not right, uh, you know I'm yeah. very disappointed. These were unusually. They were really good. I didn't at first. I was like, I'm not sure if I like it. But then it hit me, and I was like, I love it. Yeah. I filled an entire suitcase of box. I think about thirteen back. So. <laughs> Did customs have any problem with you bringing those back? No, they're, they're a cake. They're all processed. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's essentially a cake at its lowest level. Yeah, right. So like, I'm not bringing back a banana. Yeah, I'm not bringing back any fruit or yeah. any kind of Asian fruit. I've never, or something I've like never that. heard of anybody have a problem bringing them back. So, <laughs> all right. Well, Tone, uh, I really appreciate you being on the show. Uh, at, at Tone Vacations. At Tone Travels. At Tone Travels. And it's Sorry, at, and Tone it, Travels. And well, you combine them, and it's hashtag Pointscation. Pointscation, it's like all the, right. It's like, my, it's like the birth a <laughs> hashtag Tone Vacation. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna, we'll have all that on the screen, too. All right. Tony, thank you. Thank Appreciate you, yeah. All right, I want to thank you for watching another episode of the Matt Lagore Show. And go out and be your own uh, alchemist of the economy and do something great and figure out something amazing. And you, too, can sit right here in this chair on the Matt Lagore Show. Thanks for watching.